In the normal neutrophil, upon activation, reactive oxygen species, or ROS, are produced in order to kill microbes in the phagosomes. This event is mediated by the multiprotein NADPH oxidase complex. Mutations in any one of the subunits of NADPH oxidase complex result in impaired capacity of neutrophils to produce hydrogen peroxide and kill bacteria. These mutations are responsible for the primary immune deficiency known as chronic granulomatous disease or CGD. The screening tests for chronic granulomatous disease are based on assessing the very intracellular process we've just described. Historically, the nitroblue tetrazoleum or NBT test has been employed, but it requires significant operator experience and is only semi-quantitative. Currently, the most frequently used screening test for CGD is based on a flow cytometry assessment. Dihydrorhodamine is a chemical compound that can permeate most cellular compartments and membranes and spontaneously enters cells. Following contact with ROS, dihydrorhodamine or DHR is oxidized to rhodamine 123. Rhodamine is brightly fluorescent and its presence can be detected by flow cytometry. In the absence of a functional NADPH oxidase complex, as is the case in CGD, DHR is not converted to rhodamine and does not fluoresce. The DHR test is a relatively simple, important pre-analytical and analytical issues should be kept in mind. First, since the DHR test requires the production of ROS by neutrophils, it is imperative that neutrophils are viable when assessed. This mandates the use of freshly drawn blood, which is analysed within 24 to 48 hours. The sample should be drawn in tubes containing an anticoagulant agent that does not reduce the viability of cells. Usually heparin is employed. Tubes should be transported to the laboratory at room temperature. Secondly, the absence of fluorescence can be due to either the presence of the disease or to technical issues. Therefore, it is crucial to systematically run a control sample in parallel. This test will only be interpretable if, if the oxidation pattern of the control sample is normal, which effectively excludes technical issues. It's important to try to avoid blood samples from the mother as a control, who may manifest with an abnormal DHR herself. The test consists of several different steps. After lysis of red blood cells, leukocytes are briefly incubated with dihydrorhodamine. Catalase can be added to eliminate excess hydrogen peroxide. Subsequently, 4 well 12 myristate 13 acetate or PMA is added to half of the sample in order to activate the neutrophils and trigger release of reactive oxygen species. A parallel tube of the other half of the leukocytes is left unstimulated and serves as a reference. Samples should be acquired in a timely fashion at the flow cytometer. Here are the results of a normal control test. You'll appreciate an oval gate has been placed around the neutrophils for analysis. You can see that stimulated cells in red have a much higher fluorescence than unstimulated cells which have a blue histogram and can be clearly distinguished. Here we can see the result from a patient with complete absence of NADPH oxidase activity causing a complete or classical form of chronic granulomatous disease. As you can see, upon stimulation, their neutrophils do not have the ability to oxidize DHR and retain the same fluorescence as the unstimulated cells. A diagnosis of CGD can be established when less than 30% of the cells are positive. However, since this finding has significant clinical implications, it's imperative to confirm the diagnosis on a second sample taken on a different occasion. Some patients with chronic granulomatous disease have a partial rather than a complete deficit. In this case, cells display some residual capacity to oxidize DHR. The recognition of these cases is important since residual activity may have an impact on prognosis. Another cause for a reduction in the percentage of DHR positive cells 
could be neutrophil dysfunction secondary to the use of steroids or other conditions. In this case, the findings are usually not as abnormal as, as in CGD patients and normalise upon resolution of such conditions or removal of the secondary cause. When picking a control for the DHR test, it is preferable to avoid family members. In particular, the mother of a male patient suspected to have X-linked CGD may be a carrier of the mutated allele. If she is a carrier, due to random inactivation of the X chromosome, two populations of neutrophils are evident on the DHR test, which results in a double peak. One due to the cells with a non-functional NADPH oxidase, and a second due to cells that can oxidise DHR regularly. Patients affected by CGD due to mutation in the P40 subunit may have abnormal results when the dihydrorhodamine test is performed after a stimulation with PMA, as we've described here. An alteration of DHR oxidation can only be seen after a chemotactic peptide, 4 mile methanol leucylphenyl alanine, or FMLP, plus TNF-alpha, or platelet activating factor, or E. coli stimulation. Therefore, when the clinical picture is typical for CGD, this diagnosis cannot be completely ruled out with a normal DHR oxidation, and further explorations should be pursued. In conclusion, the dihydrorhodamine test is reliable for the screening of CGD and should be performed in all patients with clinical manifestations compatible with this disorder. Its relatively easy execution and low cost permit its broad implementation. In cases of a patient with a positive test on two different samples, it is important that a genetic diagnosis is pursued. Thank you for your attention and we hope that you enjoyed the video.